This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Jacqueline Matter. Thanks for joining us. Topping our news this evening, a terror attack right in the heart of New York City. The would-be suicide bomber setting off the crude device during rush hour in a scenario that New Yorkers have dreaded for years. A massive police and fire response shutting down Times Square. Investigators say the suspect is an immigrant from Bangladesh who told them he was inspired by ISIS. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has the latest tonight from Port Authority. This is the moment authorities say a 27-year-old man detonated a homemade pipe bomb he had strapped to his body. This was an attempted terrorist attack. That attack coming right in the middle of morning rush hour. The subway, they evacuating at this time. Police responding to a reported explosion around 7.20 Monday morning near Times Square in a busy underground passageway that connects to New York's Port Authority bus terminal, the largest in the world. These four officers approaching the suspect on the ground, but still alive, taken to the hospital with injuries to his arms and torso. That man, now identified as Akayed Ula, originally from Bangladesh, who moved to the U.S. seven years ago. Officials say he told them he was inspired by ISIS propaganda and he built the makeshift bomb in his Brooklyn apartment using instructions he found on the Internet, and he is believed to have acted alone. The device is based on a, a pipe bomb. It was uh, affixed to his person with a combination of uh, Velcro and zip ties. In the immediate aftermath, commuters quickly evacuated. I heard some say bloom. I saw smoke and I got out of there. As the NYPD armed with assault rifles and bomb sniffing dogs moved in. And in Brooklyn, the FBI searching the suspect's apartment. The bomb squad parked right outside. In the meantime, the suspect's family released a statement which read in part, they are heartbroken and that they have confidence that our justice system will find the truth behind this attack. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Port Authority, New York. If you heard a loud boom coming from Tampa Bay over the weekend, you're not alone. And now we may know where it was coming from. The boom shook homes in Pasco, Hillsborough and Polk counties. A spokesperson for the North American Aerospace Defense Command says two F-15 fighter jets were given permission to fly at supersonic speed, about 760 miles an hour, over the Gulf of Mexico, protecting President Trump during his visit to Florida. The jets were on patrol in support of Trump's visit, but were not responding to any incident. An investigation is currently underway. A missing sheriff's canine in Charlotte County found dead today in a necropsy report now showing what happened to the dog. The Charlotte County Sheriff's Office says their canine Edo was found dead off Cranberry Road in Northport. A necropsy report says the dog's injuries were consistent with being hit by a car. The dog had gone missing on Saturday afternoon from his handler's garage. And many questions still remain, including how the dog managed to get out of his cage. Could it be something as the dog just got out? Could it be something as somebody lifted the gate and got it out? Um, you know, we just don't have those answers right now. The Northport Police Department is investigating and officials did say that the cage was still latched when the handler realized the dog was gone. An update now on a homicide in the city of Sarasota that happened nearly two years ago. In June of 2015, Johnny Campbell Jr. and Carlos Suarez were shot to death by Ronald Howard on 33rd Street in Sarasota. For the last several years, Sarasota Police Detective Daniel Riley and State Attorney Prosecutor Karen Fravillig have worked together to bring closure to this case. Last week, Ronald Howard was convicted of two counts of first degree murder and one count of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He was sentenced by Judge Riva to two consecutive life terms for the murder charges and 15 years for possession of a firearm. And a Sarasota County man is sentenced to 50 years in prison and will be on probation as a sex offender following his release. Christopher McWatt was convicted after a jury found him guilty of possessing child pornography. The images were found in his home after the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant in 2014. McWatt was convicted of possessing 40 images and videos of child porn on his external hard drive and computer. The crimes carried a maximum possible sentence of 600 years. 
Well, let's check in with meteorologist Steve Newman for a look at your first alert forecast. Steve, pretty chilly out there tonight. Ah, uh, Jacqueline, if you don't like it chilly, you want to be a little warmer, I've got good news for you. It's not going to be quite as cold overnight. If we look at the temperature change between this hour last night and now, three degrees warmer in Tampa, four degrees warmer in Orlando, much warmer up north where it should not be below freezing. They had a hard freeze up uh, from Gainesville to the Georgia border. And across our viewing area, anywhere from one to three degrees warmer than they were last night, which doesn't sound like much, but the humidity's up, the dew point is up, and that's what's going to keep the temperatures from plunging down, even though we still have clear skies and fairly light to calm winds. Clear but not as cold tonight. You can see when the sun was up, the clouds still moving to the north to the south. Radar at this hour, not one single drop of rain is falling anywhere in the state of Florida, nor will it for a while, I don't think, but Friday looks like it might be a wet day. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but our overnight future cast in high definition shows light and variable winds with just a few clouds here and there, mainly clear skies, but it's going to turn windy tomorrow as a cold front approaches from the north. Here's your evening planner, your overnight planner, showing clear and starlit tonight. Low temperatures, probably close to 48 or 49 degrees, and starting to warm up very quickly right after sunrise. Our complete forecast in a couple minutes. Okay, thank you so much, Steve. An important part of Palmetto's agricultural history could soon be coming to an end. There's discussion about a development featuring numerous apartment units, which would be built on the land owned by Heartland Fertilizer. ABC 7's Rick Adams joins us from that location with more details. Well, even though this is still in the very early stages, there was a lot of talk of transforming this land into a mixed-use apartment complex, which could also include some retail space. If some folks have their way, it could be out with the old and in with the new on these more than eight acres of land on 11th Avenue West in Palmetto. Currently, the Heartland Fertilizer Plant sits on the property. They've been around for more than three decades. Now there is talk that a developer wants to build at least 150 market-rate apartment units, which would also have a retail component to it as well. It'd be nice to see a change, I guess. You know, it, it, no offense towards him. I'm sure he runs a great business as well. I'm sure budgeting, he can't afford to, to fix it. But, you know, like I said, once again, if they're going to keep it a nice car apartment complex, great. This apartment complex discussion is being met with a lot of mixed reaction from neighbors. All Stephanie Danforth has lived right next to the fertilizer plant with her husband and children for 13 years. They say they might be okay with a smaller development coming in, but not in favor of this type of apartment complex, which could be up to four stories tall. To bring in a large apartment complex, it really is, is going to kind of take away from the character of the area. The land, which sits right next to the Palmetto Police Department, still needs to be purchased by the developer and go through the rezoning process with the city. Mayor Shirley Groover Bryant tells us there is definitely a need for more affordable housing in Palmetto and throughout the Sun Coast. We all need housing for the community and um, certainly anytime you can help uh, the the community by providing that or enticing people to locate it in your area. That's something you want to pursue. And if all goes according to plan, ground could be broken here within the next year or so, and a new apartment complex could be here within the next two years. Reporting from Palmetto, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you so much, Rick. Today, Governor Rick Scott thanking the 50 Florida Highway Patrol troopers who deployed in November to Puerto Rico. Scott deployed the troopers in response to an emergency management assistance request from the Puerto Rico Police Department. These troopers conducted security operations and traffic control in and around the city of San Juan. They arrived in Puerto Rico on November 14th and returned to Florida today. Well, stay with us. Meteorologist Steve Newman will be back with your first alert forecast, plus the final countdown to the showdown in Alabama as voters prepare to hit the polls in a monumental Senate race. And why a federal judge is declining President Trump's request involving transgender people in the military. Those stories when we come back. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. 
Installed by a highly skilled team, G-Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G-Freed Flooring America. G-Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Listen to this important message. If you owe money to the IRS, you will want to hear this. The IRS is cracking down on those who owe back taxes. They send out devastating letters, garnish paychecks, and even put liens on your home or business. You may have heard of it. It's called enforced compliance. Penalties and interest compound daily on your back taxes, putting you under a mountain of debt. Tax 10,000 has years of experience connecting people with tax resolution specialists who will negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. Working through the IRS Fresh Start program, they will handle all the necessary forms and can negotiate a tax settlement with the IRS. It's that simple. And if you qualify, you may end up saving thousands of dollars, finally ending your financial stress. Now is the time for a fresh start. Now is the time to call Tax 10,000. 800-699-3188. That's 800-699-3188. Call now. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. So certainly yeah. some colder temperatures. Lots of people probably maybe even turning their heater on. Tonight. I had mine on. I had a heating pad under my legs last night. Okay. It was so cold. Right. Yeah, I was working the weather here 45 years ago tonight. Wow. And something happened that day. And I've been trying to remember all day what it was. Maybe it'll occur to me during the weather. <laughs> Let's take a look at what the weather was like today from our Anna Maria camera. What a beautiful start to the day. The winds were calm. We got a little breezy in the afternoon that kicked up a little tiny waves there on the bay. And by sunset, it was absolutely gorgeous. Not a cloud in the sky. High temperatures today, 64 at Tampa, 67 at Fort Myers. 69 was a high in Miami. And after a freezing start, they managed to warm up to 61 at Gainesville. I think they were like down to 27 overnight. And our highs across the viewing area pretty much the mid-60s everywhere. Currently at Sarasota Braden International Airport, 46 degrees, the dew point 44. I think it's going to come up a little bit, so I think this is pretty close to as cold as we're going to get, maybe 46, 45, but certainly not down to 40, which is what we had at sunrise this morning. Winds right now are calm. Looking at the Almanac, uh, last night's low, there's the 40, the afternoon high was 64, and on this date, 45 years ago today, we broke the record for the state of 87. I was doing the weather here at what we now call ABC7, and it just so happens. Channel 40 Weather Watch, the late night report. Well, tornadoes and a variety of adverse weather has been occurring up in the northern portion of the state, particularly in the panhandle into Alabama and Mississippi. Oh, tonight. my goodness, a very young 20-year-old, Steve. But uh, I'm still here and still kicking out the weather. We have clear skies right over the heart of Florida right now. Uh, those winds are slackening off as we see calm weather right now. But as the front approaches during the day tomorrow, those winds are going to pick up off the Gulf, bringing in uh, milder temperatures and gusts up to about 20 miles an hour. But nothing like the stormy night they have across the Great Lakes with snow spreading from Michigan across Ontario into upstate New York. And look at the future cast. That's going to head right on to New, to New England. But along the uh, highly populated I-95 corridor, it's all going to be rain, at least on this one. But look back, we have another area developing for Thursday, spinning out across the Ohio Valley and heading on a further south direction. So maybe they'll get some snow Thursday into Friday in the New York City area. Well, here is the buckle on the jet stream causing that bitter cold air over most of the east and warm, unseasonably warm and dry in the west. High pressure over us. And that front up there is heading in our direction.
Temperatures right now, it's still bitterly cold in Toronto, 27, uh, Montreal, 14, Chicago, 33. They're going to be in the teens tomorrow up in that part of the country. Well, here are weather headlines for the rest of this week. A thermal roller coaster. Going to get warm one day, cold the next, warm, cold, but it'll all even out by this time next week. Look for lows tonight, uh, warmer tomorrow with temperatures about 72 and cooler again Wednesday, hence the roller coaster metaphor. <laughs> Here's our future cast at 11 o'clock, looking through the night and tomorrow, fair to partly cloudy skies. It should not rain. Here comes the front tomorrow afternoon with the gusty winds bringing in cooler weather one more time, but not colder weather. And once that's gone, we'll warm up again for Thursday before the rain gets here Friday. Here's our forecast for tonight. Look for skies to be clear and not quite as cold. 46, 47, the overnight low temperature. Our average is 55. Winds will be light. And then tomorrow, notice the winds pick up in the morning gradually as that front gets closer and closer. It's a dry front. It won't have any rain associated with it. It'll be breezy. 72 the high. Average will be 74. And here's the seven-day outlook the good and the bad of it all. After the front comes through, we drop 10 degrees on Wednesday, bounce back up to 71 Thursday. Then another stronger wetter front comes through on Friday, bringing us a 60% chance of rain. I think we may up that a little bit tomorrow as it gets closer. High 74, cooling them off for Saturday. And then things start to stabilize, I think, for Sunday and Monday of next week as we are on the final down stretch toward Christmas week. I think we'll have milder conditions and no more cold Arctic blasts, we hope. And that's our weather, Jacqueline, 45 years later. Thank you so much, Steve. Appreciate it. It's the final countdown to the showdown in Alabama. Tomorrow, voters there will head to the polls in the U.S. Senate special election that's at the forefront of a national discussion about sexual assault. Mary Maloney has the latest on the race and the big names. They're getting involved in the 11th hour. In just a few hours, voters in Alabama will cast ballots in a race that's drawn national attention and sparked a broader discussion about sexual abuse. The Republican candidate, Roy Moore, facing allegations that he assaulted teenage girls while in his 30s. Moore denies the accusations. The stakes are so high, a pair of presidents are adding their voices to the race. Hi, this is President Donald Trump, and I need Alabama to go vote for Roy Moore. President Trump recording a robocall for Roy Moore, matched by a message from former President Barack Obama backing Democratic candidate Doug Jones, telling voters in an automated message, quote, this one's serious, you can't sit it out. The battle lines are clearly drawn, but not always along party lines. Alabama's most prominent Republican, Senator Richard Shelby, denouncing more over the weekend. I'd rather see uh, the Republican win, but I hope that Republican would be a write-in. I uh, couldn't vote for Roy Moore. I didn't vote for Roy Moore. The Jones campaign using Shelby's comments in an online ad and robocall. I think that the people of the state, they've elected Richard Shelby for four decades. They're going to listen to Richard Shelby. Jones spent the weekend campaigning across the state alongside prominent Democrats. Moore laying low over the weekend, though he did tape an interview with a local media outlet. I do not know them. I had no encounter with them. I never molested anyone. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. A federal judge is declining President Trump's request to put a hold on allowing transgender individuals to join the military. The decision means transgender recruits will be free to enlist starting January 1st of 2018. So far, two federal judges have blocked key provisions of President Trump's prohibition on transgender individuals serving in the military. Trump announced the ban on Twitter in July and then made it official with a directive memo in August. If you're working to check names off your holiday shopping list, there's still time to get gifts delivered by Christmas, but the deadline to ship is coming fast. In order to help Santa get those presents under the tree, there's some deadlines you need to know. Get your packages to the post office by Thursday. That's if you want the standard ground delivery. FedEx has a Friday deadline for the standard ground service. UPS gives you next Monday, December 18th, for its three-day select. If you still need time to shop, the three major carriers will deliver closer to Christmas, but it'll cost you more. The last day to ship FedEx for a guaranteed Christmas delivery is Thursday, December 21st. The post office and UPS give you an extra day, Friday, to beat Santa. Be prepared to wait in long lines with others trying to beat the clock. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. Well, sports is next, but first, here's Jimmy Kimmel.
Watch this and then discuss it with your friends. Daddy cries on TV, but Billy doesn't. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. For 30 years, it's been an honor for the Michaels on Ice team to serve you. We love that our restaurant, wine cellar, and ballroom have become your favorite gathering places, and we love catering your parties. From everyday celebrations to life's greatest occasions, please join us soon for new culinary adventures. A toast to 30 years. And to many more. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to Mesobook.com. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Now, sports. The New York Yankees have acquired National League MVP Giancarlo Stanton from the Miami Marlins. The Yankees announcing the trade today, getting the slugger and cash from Miami for Starlin, Castro, and two minor leaguers, right-hander Jorge Guzman and infielder Jose Devers. Stanton is still owed $295 million over the final decade of his record of his record $325 million 13-year contract. Rather, the 28-year-old led the majors with 59 home runs and 132 RBIs last season. When I signed up in Miami, I wanted things to work out, and I, I, uh, I had a, a good vision there. Um, but, you know, some, sometimes things just, just spiral uh, out of place, and, you know, you, you have to find a new home. So. I'm very excited to be here and be a part of the Yankees, and um, I'm just looking forward to to uh, stepping up and being with this winning environment and winning culture. So I'm happy to be here. And the New England Patriots taking on the Miami Dolphins in Monday Night Football. Some good news for the Dolphins tonight. They're not facing star Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski, the three-time All-Pro tight end, sitting the game out tonight, serving a one-game suspension for a late hit to the head of Buffalo Bills defensive back a week ago. The Patriots have won five of their past six games against Miami, including a 35-17 win two weeks ago. 
Currently, the Dolphins are leading 27 to 17 in the fourth quarter with just five minutes left in the game. And the NFL's new deal with Verizon means smartphone users will be able to watch football games regardless of their carrier. The league recently reached a new multi-year deal with Verizon to carry NFL games on mobile phones. Starting in January, anyone with a smartphone will be able to watch NFL games airing in their local market as well as nationally televised matchups, including the Super Bowl. Fans can stream games on three apps, Yahoo Sports, Verizon's Go90, and NFL Mobile. Previously, NFL smartphone streaming was exclusively for Verizon customers. The NFL says the new deal allows millions of fans additionally ways, add, adding ways to follow the league. That's a look at sports. We'll have your winning lotto numbers when we come back. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. It's the holiday sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sport Utility for $269 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $279 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida's Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. Florida Studio Theater presents Mac the Knife, celebrating the spirited and immense talent of one of the greatest performers of the 20th century. Featuring some of Bobby Darren's biggest hits such as Splish Splash, Beyond the Sea, Dream Lover, and of course, Mac the Knife. Critics say Mac the Knife is energetic, performed with great spirit, full of impressive arrangements. Audiences are calling it outstanding in every way. Mac the Knife is now playing. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. A secret Santa is bringing Christmas joy to a town in Pennsylvania. 200 families got their layaway gifts at Walmart paid off. Employees say this is the second straight year the anonymous donor has done this, and one shopper was brought to tears. She says her kids are now able to get their games and toys. I think kids for Christmas. I remember when I was growing up for Christmas, and I was just telling my mom the other day, I want my kids to have Christmas like that. 
Employees call the secret donor Santa B. About $40,000 were donated to pay for the layaway items. It's always great to see all the people that are giving back in some <laughs> way, some yes. shape during the holidays. And that's what the spirit's all about, right. the Christmas spirit. Uh, well, I don't know if you noticed, but our current temperature is almost a predicted low for tonight. So here's your first alert weather <laughs> update for tonight's forecast. <laughs> Look for it to be clear and not as cold still. We were 40 this morning, oh. probably 44 for the low. And for tomorrow, look for it to be mostly sunny and breezy as the cold front comes through. High temperature 72 and your seven day outlook. Another quick look at it shows it cools us off for Wednesday, recover Thursday, wet Friday, and then we start a warming trend and a, a trend that we get away from these cold nights and every other day. I think that's just going to be over in time for Christmas. Kind My Christmas present to you. So <laughs> thank you so much and thank you all for watching us tonight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good evening.